Hello again. This week we're talking about wounds and the stages that we go through in terms of repairing those wounds. And it's a really interesting subject. So I'm gonna have a quick blast through it. Obviously it's a bit more complicated than we've got in a few minutes. So when we talk about wounds, we're talking about anything that's damaged our tissue. So it could be surgery, it could be sprains, it could be a cut, it could be you name it. And the first thing to remember is that we've got dead skin. The actual impact of the cut or the graze that we have is going to kill all the tissues, the cells that are around that tin and they need to be repaired. It's really, really important. The first thing that happens in any injury, whether it's a muscle sprain or a strain, is that there is going to be some bleeding going into that area. We can understand that if that is from a cut or a scratch or a graze or even surgery. And we can also understand that from inside. If we have a muscle tear, we will see that it becomes inflamed and it goes red and it will swell up. And that's all part of that process. So the first stage of wound repair is going to be the bleed stage. Now, blood is a connective tissue. Depending on who you listen to, it's a bit controversial. Most people will say it doesn't have the fibers that most other connective tissues do, but it still does have some fibers. And these fibers are important because there's this thing called fibrinogen, which makes it a fiber, that will catch hold on the underside of the wound and grab the bits that are dangling down, if you like, and create this formation over which then we all get the scab and we've all seen that. Come on, fess up. Who picked their scabs as a kid? I don't think kids have scabby knees anymore. I think between the age of five and 14, I spent my life with scabs on my knees. So once we have that scab, that sealing up, then what we have going on is we have some inflammation. Now, don't anybody ever tell you that inflammation is a bad thing because it's absolutely vital. Without inflammation, we can't get wound repair. We can't get the healing going on. And the inflammation does quite a lot of stuff. If you look around the scab that you see, I haven't got one to show you, but if you look around a scab, you'll see some redness. And this is inflammation. What's happening here is that there's a lot of cellular activity because what needs to happen is we need to build these structures back again. What also needs to happen is all that dead stuff that's been damaged in the incident, whatever it might be, needs to be cleared away. And there are specific cells that do this, and these are called macrophages and phagocytes, phagocytes, depending on how you want to say it. Phagocyte, 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 phagocyte. These cells come in and they gobble up all the dysfunctional debris. They take it away and that will all become stuff that will be dealt with by the liver. Imagine Pac-Man coming around. <laughs> clearing away all that debris. Now, while they're doing that, they're also sending out a signal. And the signal is for the fibroblasts to come in and start to do their stuff. So it leads us to a really important statement, which is inflammation leads to proliferation. When we talk about proliferation, we mean cellular activity. We mean the proliferation of cells, cells being in the area doing their thing. In this instance, it's the macrophages and the phagocytes in a process called phagocytosis, phagocytosis. This high-speed video shows a macrophage chasing down planktonic bacteria. What these cells are also doing is they're sending signals out to bring in the cavalry from behind them, the cleanup operation and the repair. What these cells are doing is they're sending signals out for the next stage of repair to take place. You've got the cleanup crew, and then you need the building team to come in behind once the cleanup's been done. So the phagocytosis is sending, process is sending signals to the fibroblasts to come in and do and take on the next stage of the repair. Now fibroblasts, if you've been paying attention, are the key cell that deals with the building of things and predominantly it produces collagen. Now what we need here is we need a rapid form of collagen to come in and fill in the space, fill in the hole, if you like, that's been created by the wound that was happening in the first place. So let's check back into our stages. We've got the bleed and that bleed process shouldn't last too long. And then we have the inflammation and the proliferation. Now it's hard to know how long inflammation can go on for, but it could be days uh, and it shouldn't be longer than say a week, but you could have an inflammatory process continuing for quite some time. Remember, we're talking about an inflammatory process associated with an actual bit of damage rather than it say being an irritation 
irritation. So when I say an irritation, I mean, if I was to tap my hand or my face or something like that for any length of time, I would see that it became red and inflamed and annoyed. But if I stopped doing that, the inflammation would go away. So it's not inflammation that's coming from a repetitive action, but inflammation that's coming from the process of damage and then the wound repair taking place. None of the stages that we're talking about here are clear cut. There isn't a start and a finish as such to any of them. And there isn't a specific time that any of them are gonna last for there will be overlaps to all of these things. Right, so where are we? We've got our bleed, our proliferation, because it's coming from inflammation. Again, there's gonna be an overlap, all those cells are working, and now we need some repair, and those phagocytes and macrophages have been sending out signals to the building team to get ready. As we mentioned, we're gonna be starting to bring in the collagen from the fibroblast. Now we mentioned fibroblasts and the fibroblasts are the building block cells and they're producing predominantly collagen and the type of collagen that they're going to be producing initially is going to be a type three collagen. This is kind of important. And collagen is the most common protein in the body. It accounts for a third, 25, 35% of all the proteins that we have, depending on the studies that you read. There are about, 30, 40 different types of collagen, about 29 in the human body. And mainly in humans, the, the, the vast majority of them are type one to five. And type one accounts for 90% of them. That doesn't mean to say that the other 10% isn't really important. And in this instance, these type threes are doing a really, really important job. They are coming in to create effectively a mesh, a covering, like an emergency closing to get that scar tissue built up. And now we've mentioned the word scar tissue, which is really, really important because the thing that's been damaged, broken, cut, wounded, will never be that tissue again. It will never be that muscle or that skin. It will always be scar tissue. You'll never change it back to what it was doing, but it will manage to do the job that that was doing. And that's what the next stage is, which is remodeling. Let's go back, bleed inflammation, proliferation, remodeling. The type threes have been laid down to create the repair of the wound. And later on, what's going to happen is that those type threes are going to be exchanged with type ones, that collagen that is the most common uh, protein in the body, the most, uh, the most common collagen in the body. And that's when the, when the full overlap is taking place. Again, we don't know how long this is gonna take. It could be 12 months to 18 months. And we also don't know how much collagen is gonna get laid down. You can have too much of a good thing and you can end up with these keloid scars that will end up creating a bigger thickening than we had before. The actual switch over from one point to another to another isn't going to be clear and there are going to be instructions that go to the cells to stop doing what they're doing. That's a process of programmed cell death and it's called apoptosis. You staying with me? I kind of like this stuff, it's quite geeky. Anyway, literally the cells pop when they are supposed to. When you're a fetus, you have webbing between your fingers, that webbing goes away and those cells die and that's that process of apoptosis, programmed cell death. Here's the cool thing, we don't know what triggers that? What makes those cells pop anywhere? Wow, isn't that amazing? So we don't have an understanding of the mechanism that changes from one state of repair to another, and we don't know how long that repair is going to last or take or be around for, and it could be a lot longer than we think, or it could be a lot shorter than we think. So wound healing isn't an exact science, but the principle of inflammation is an important one, and we shouldn't try and restrict it or slow it down with things like anti-inflammatories, particularly where there's wound repair going on. Broken bones is a good example. Don't take ibuprofen for them. Obviously take pain, kill, pain relief, uh, but the anti-inflammatories are something that should be avoided. It does slow down bone repair. Finally, on the subject of, of collagen, I should mention it because I do get asked a lot, is there any benefit to taking collagen as a supplement? The answer is probably not. Collagen is produced by fibroblasts in response to a, a cell signal. So just taking it into your system is probably not gonna get collagen into your skin, bones, or anything else. The evidence isn't really there for it, so 
hard to say. So what can we do? What's our involvement as therapists, whether it be movement or whether it be um, approaches as far as manual therapy is concerned? And the answer is we don't want to do anything or introduce any kind of action which is going to increase the inflammation or increase blood flow into an area. This will include ice. Don't put ice on an inflamed area. It's just not a thing you want to do. I don't want to be introducing deep tissue work or massage into areas where there is um, an early stage injury, but that doesn't mean to say that I can't keep other areas mobile and moving through lighter tissue work or mobilization. That's absolutely fine. By the time we get to 12, 14 weeks down the line, we can be reasonably sure that the injury, the wound, if you like, has gone through the bleed, the inflammation process, and is proliferating, and we can be dealing with something that is relatively safe to work on, to move, and so on and so forth. So there we go, that's wound healing. Kind of a bit geeky, some cellular stuff in there. Um, I hope you followed along. It's not an exact science, we don't really know what goes on. Some things help it, some things don't seem to, and uh, we don't know when it's gonna stop or when it's gonna start, go figure. Hopefully that's been <laughs> helpful to some degree. What do you think? Let me know, put your comments uh, in the comment section below. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button. You ca I cannot tell you how much that helps me if you subscribe and uh, please like, share, do all the things you're supposed to do on social media. Head on over to the website, functionalatomy.com for loads more and I will see you next time.